an overview of China's futures market and INE. Today's presentation will cover an overview of China's futures market, an introduction of SHFE and INE, a glimpse of how to access China's markets, and finally, a brief introduction of the INE Express courses. First of all, let's get started with the overview of China's futures market. This is the regulatory framework of China's futures market. The regulatory authority of the futures market is China Securities Regulatory Commission, or the CSRC, which regulates the futures exchanges, regional CSRC offices, China Futures Association, and the China Futures Market Monitoring Center. There are five futures exchanges in China, among which four are commodities futures exchanges, and one is a financial futures exchange. The four exchanges on the left of the slide, Shanghai Futures Exchange, Shanghai International Energy Exchange, Dalian Commodity Exchange, and Zhengzhou Commodity Exchange are commodity futures exchanges. And the fifth one on the right, China Financial Futures Exchange is the only financial futures exchange in China. In particular, INE is a wholly owned subsidiary of SHFE and also the international platform for SHFE. Different from DCE and ZCE, all the international products of SHFE are listed on INE. We will talk about that later. Here is an overview of the major markets and financial institutions subject to CSRC regulation. CSRC was established in 1992 to regulate China's capital markets, including the multi-tiered equity market, the exchange-traded bond market, the futures and derivatives markets, and the fund market. It is also the regulator for financial institutions in the capital market, including securities firms, futures firms, public funds, private funds, and other intermediaries such as accounting and law firms, credit rating agencies, etc. The most well-known market is the equity market, especially the Shanghai Stock Exchange and the Shenzhen Stock Exchange which we usually refer to as A-share markets. According to the CSRC's annual report in 2018, over 3,500 companies were listed on Shanghai Stock Exchange and Shenzhen Stock Exchange. The total market capitalization on the two stock exchanges stood at 44 trillion yuan, which is equivalent to 48% of China's GDP in 2018. Besides these two stock exchanges, we also have the National Equities Exchange and Quotations and quite a few regional equity trading platforms in operation, which are also regulated by CSRC. Shanghai Stock Exchange and Shenzhen Stock Exchange also list exchange-traded bonds, including corporate bonds, asset-backed securities, local government bonds, policy bank bonds, and convertible bonds. By the end of 2018, the nominal value of outstanding exchange-traded bonds stood at 11 trillion yuan. Close to 3,000 bonds were issued on the exchange, raising a growth of total 5,700 billion yuan. Next is the futures and derivatives market. As mentioned earlier, this market consists of four commodity futures exchanges and one financial futures exchange. We will elaborate in later slides. The fund market covers public funds and private funds. By the end of 2018, the total asset under management of public funds was 18 trillion yuan from close to 6,000 public funds, and it's the social security fund, corporate annuities, etc. Over 74,000 private funds were registered, with a total AUM of 13 trillion yuan. Finally are the financial institutions. By the end of 2018, the 131 securities firms had a total asset of 6.3 trillion yuan. The 149 futures firms are all members of SHFE and INE. They had a total asset of 514 billion yuan. Public and private funds were mentioned earlier. Other financial institutions such as accounting firms, law firms, 
credit rating agencies and securities investment advisory firms are all important components of the capital market. All the above forms a full picture of China's capital market regulated by CSRC. Now we will delve into the market we are in, the futures market. China's futures market saw rapid growth in 2019, with the trading volume surged to the second highest level on record, only next to that of 2016. In 2019, China's futures market recorded a trading volume of about 4 billion lots and a turnover of about 291 trillion yuan, up by 31% year on year. The global ranking of Chinese futures exchanges rose steadily in terms of trading volume. According to the Futures Industry Association, Shanghai Futures Exchange has ranked the first among all global commodity exchanges in terms of trading volume for four consecutive years. The other two Chinese ex commodity exchanges also performed well. Dalian Commodity Exchange rose to the second place in 2019 and Zhenzhou Commodity Exchange remained number four. Compared with other global exchanges which had negative year-on-year -year growth, Chinese exchange demonstrated a huge development potential with a robust growth of 20 to 40 percent year-on-year. By the end of August 2020, there were 83 listed futures and options contracts. On SHFE and INE, 24 futures and option contracts are listed. The main product types are metals and energy. For DCE and CCE, the main product types are agricultural and industrial products. And for CFAX, the main product types are equity index and bond futures. The products in red are international products. As you can see from this table, there are five international futures products in China. Three of them are listed on INE. INE launched its first international product, crude oil futures, in 2018, followed by TSR20 futures in 2019 and the loss of fuel oil futures in June 2020. Over two years after the listing of Shanghai crude, it has become the third largest oil benchmark globally, only next to WTI and Brent. TSR20 ranked number one among similar products globally in terms of trading volume. And in less than two months after its launch, INE's low sulfur fuel oil futures has become the most liquid low sulfur fuel oil contract in Asia and also in the world. My colleagues will introduce the contract specifications and relevant rules on these products in more details. This is the ranking of the top 10 Chinese futures contracts in 2019. By trading volume, steel rebar of SHFE ranked first nationwide with a market share of 12%. It is also the world's largest metal futures by trading volume according to FIA statistics. Globally, the top three agricultural products are also Chinese futures products, including soybean meal of DCE, rapeseed meal of CCE, and palm olein of DCE. The top 10 products registered a total trading volume of 2.4 billion lots, accounting for 61% of the commodity futures market. Their total turnover reached 131 trillion yuan, representing 59% of the total market. Besides the exchanges, Chinese Futures Market Monitoring Center, or the CFMMC, also plays an important role in ensuring the safe operation of the market. CFMMC was established in 2006 and was originally named China Futures Margin Monitoring Center. As the name suggests, the major function of the CFMMC is the monitoring of margins on the futures market and to make sure there is no misuse or misappropriation of funds. Around 400 to 500 billion yuan of margin are under the monitoring of CFMMC. Apart from margin monitoring, account opening is also an essential function of CFMMC. Anyone who wants to invest in China's futures market must apply through CFMMC's account opening system first. CFMMC will review the application materials and then will forward the materials to the relevant futures exchanges 
who will recheck the materials and assign a unique trading code to client. Besides daily supervision, CFMC is also in charge of research, information services, and the other functions. Research includes macro and industry analysis, futures market research, and compilation and issuance of commodity index. Information service including answering trading and clearing information inquiry by investors and providing information to regulatory authorities and futures exchanges. Other functions include custody of futures investor safeguard funds and assisting in the disposition of bankrupt futures firms. Next is China's Futures Association or the CFA. China Futures Association is a national self-disciplinary organization of the futures industry founded in the year 2000. It is mainly responsible for the code of conduct and self-regulation of the industry. Member services, examinations, certification and training, as well as research and innovation. As a self-regulatory organization, China Futures Association is responsible for the formation of self-regulatory rules and code of conduct. It also coordinates self-regulatory inspection of members and practitioners. Examination and certification are probably the most well-known function of the association. Practitioners and the senior officers in a domestic futures firm must pass the qualification test organized by China Futures Association before practicing in China's futures market. As part of the eligibility requirements for the crude oil, TSR20, and loss of a few oil futures, the person who places order for institutional clients and individual clients themselves must participate on the online eligibility test organized by China Futures Association. All the futures firms in China are members of China Futures Association. It is responsible for membership management and organizing industrial appraisals. Investors can find the annual rating of all the futures firms on the website of the association. Here's the link to the 2019 rating. Firms rated as AA are the top firms in risk management, market competitiveness, development of institutional investors, and continuous compliance. Other ratings include B, C, and D. Investors can check the rating before choosing its futures firm. The association is also responsible for drafting the long-term development plan for the industry and the annual development report of China's futures industry. It also organizes and promotes new business development. Now let's move on to the next part and talk about SHFE and INE. Here is a glimpse of SHFE and INE in general. SHFE has around 1.8 million clients and INE has around 180,000 clients. By August 2020, SHFE and INE have altogether 24 products, including 19 futures and five options. The total trading volume of SHFE and INE in 2019 is 1.4 billion lots accounting for 36.5% of the whole market, the largest among all commodity exchanges in China. The total trading value in 2019 reached 11 trillion yuan, accounting for 39% of the whole market in China. SHFE and INE have 101 designated delivery storage facilities and 198 members, among which 149 are futures firm members and 13 designated depository banks. SHFE and INE have won various awards globally. In 2019, SHFE was granted the Award of Chinese Exchange of the Year by FOW and Commodity Exchange of the Year by Energy Risk. SHFE also won the Award of China's Best Futures Exchange of the Year in 2014. SHFE and INE also performed well in product innovation. In 2018 and 2014 respectively, INE's crude oil futures and SHFE's bitumen futures won the best new derivatives contract award respectively. SHFE and INE 
are also internationally recognized. Both of them are members of the Futures Industry Association and the World Federation of Ex Exchanges. They are qualified central counterparties recognized by CSRC. Early this year, SHFE and INE became the first two commodity exchanges in China to have been included into the positive list of post-trade transparency by ESMA, which would facilitate the participation of EU investors into these two markets. As the pioneer in the opening up of China's futures market, INE was also the first Chinese commodity exchange to be approved as an automatic trading system by the Hong Kong SFC and a recognized market operator by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. As a futures exchange, the major function starts from product development and listing, including futures and options. This is the basis of all trading activities. Once the contracts are listed, trading, clearing, and market supervision will be the major daily operations that the exchange conducts. At expiry of the contract, delivery and standard warrant business starts. Futures exchanges play a very important role in price discovery, hedging, and asset allocation. Consumers, producers, trading houses, hedge funds, mutual funds, and retail investors all trade on the same platform to discover a price that reflects all factors that might influence commodity prices. Such prices, in turn, become the basis of various hedging tools, including futures, options, and indices. Futures and option trading also allows investors allocate their assets in different product types, such as metals, energy, and chemicals. These functions are made possible because of the strong support of IT systems, data and information systems, investor education, research, and the sound connection between the futures and the physical markets. The following slides are the contract specifications of all the products listed on INE and SHFE, including futures on non-ferrous metals, ferrous metals, precious metals, energy and chemical, and the options. I will not go into details on every contract due to time constraint. All of these can be found on the official website of SHFE and INE. So much said, how can we access the market? Currently, there are four major ways to access Chinese market. First is to establish a wholly foreign-owned enterprise, or WOFI, in China. This entity will be treated as a Chinese local company, so is eligible to treat all futures products listed on SHFE and INE. Second is to treat the international futures products. Third is to treat through QV or RQV. And a fourth is to treat through cross-market connectivity. This course will focus on international futures products and briefly touch upon the others. Qualified Foreign Institutional Investor, or QV, were introduced in 2006 to allow eligible foreign institutional investors to invest in China's securities market with foreign currency. The major participants are foreign fund management firms, insurance firms, securities firms, and the other asset management firms. In 2011, the RMB Qualified Foreign Institutional Investors, or RQV, were introduced to allow eligible foreign institutional investors to invest in China's securities market with offshore RMB. Both schemes come with a cap on investment quotas and scope. According to the statistics of the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, by the end of May this year, 295 entities from 30 countries and regions have been approved as QFIs with an aggregated approved quota of 116 billion US dollar. And 230 entities from 15 countries and regions have been approved as RQFIs with an aggregated approved quota of 723 billion yuan. In January 2019, CSRC released one policy in which the allowable investment scope of QV and RQV is expanded. 
the product in red on this slide are newly added. The QV and RQV schemes were originally introduced to invest in China's securities market. If the CSRC's new measures are finally released, QVs and RQVs will be able to invest in commodity futures and options as well as financial futures. Moreover, SAFE abolished the total investment quota for QV and RQV, which will bring more flexibility in their investment. Cross-market connectivity is a hot topic in recent years, starting with Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect. Such connectivity mainly includes Stock Connect and Bond Connect. Stock Connect first started in 2014 through a trading link between Shanghai and Hong Kong and between Shenzhen and Hong Kong. Investors on both markets can trade a selection of stocks on the other market. The Stock Connect was originally introduced with total and daily investment quotas. But in 2016, the total investment quota was abolished. Only the daily quota remains. In 2018, Shanghai Stock Exchange went a step further by linking with London Stock Exchange. Shanghai London Stock Connect allows eligible companies listed on each market to issue on the other exchange a depository receipt that can be traded under local rules in the local time zone. Investors can buy and sell depository receipts using existing trading channels and practices. Bond Connect allows investors from mainland China and overseas to trade in each other's bond market through a market infrastructure linkage in Hong Kong. North Bond Trading commenced in July 2017, offering China interbank bond market access to a broader group of international investors, while South Bond Trading will be explored at a later stage. Next is international futures products. Starting from 2018, China began to open up its futures market to overseas investors. The first international product, crude oil futures, was listed on INE in March 2018. INE launched another two international products, TSR20 and low sulfur fuel oil futures, consecutively in 2019 and 2020. DCE and ZCE also launched one international product each, namely iron ore futures and PTA futures. Moving forward, INE will launch more international products, among which the bonded copper futures, crude oil futures options, and freight index are in the pipeline. Overseas investors who are interested in trading INE can access through four channels, which are illustrated on the right side of the slide. First is to trade directly through a domestic futures firm. Second is to trade through an overseas intermediary. Third is to trade through an overseas special brokerage participant or an OSBP. And fourth is to trade as an overseas special non-brokerage participant. For access three and four, OSP trades shall be cleared by a domestic futures firm. For more details, please watch the course on overseas participation mode and comparisons. Currently, 63 overseas intermediaries have been registered with INE, including 39 from Hong Kong, 9 from Singapore, 6 from UK, 4 from Korea, 